Welcome and good morning from Washington, D.C. My name is Nari Tada Miura, Associate Program Officer at Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA. Thank you for joining us for today's policy briefing, Changing Dynamics in Japan's Refugee Policy, featuring Dr. Saburo Takizawa, former UNHCR representative in Japan, current professor emeritus at Toyo Ewa University, and Vice President of CARE International Japan. Dr. Peter Skerry, Professor of Political Science at Boston College, will provide commentary following Dr. Takizawa's remarks. As you may know, Sasakawa USA is a nonpartisan 501c3 organization dedicated to deepening the understanding of and strengthening the relationship between the US and Japan for the benefit of a free and open international community. Our activities mainly focus on security and diplomacy through the engagement of exchanges, dialogue, analysis, publications, and networking. Today's event is being recorded and is on the record. A recap and video recording will be made available on Sasakawa USA's website in the coming weeks. There will be time for a Q&A later in the program. You can submit your questions at any time using the Q&A function, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. Please feel free to submit your questions as you think of them throughout the event. With that, I would like to turn it over to Dr. Taki uh, Satohiro Akimoto, Chairman and President of Sasakawa USA. Thank you, Naritada. Good morning. I am Satohiro Akimoto, President and Chairman of Sasakawa Peace Foundation USA. Thank you very much for being with us this morning and this evening in Tokyo. I am delighted to have Saburo Takizawa, former UNHCR representative in Japan, Professor Emeritus, Tokyo, Toyo Ewa University, and Vice President CARE International Japan an international charity and humanitarian aid organization with an emphasis on empowering women and girls. Professor Takizawa, or he prefers to be called Taki, began to work for the Ministry of Justice after receiving a graduate degree from Tokyo Metropolitan University. The ministry quickly sent him to UC Berkeley, where he earned an MBA. He then joined the United Nations in 1980. He spent most of his professional life in the UN systems, focusing on various aspects of human security. Since he returned to Tokyo as UNHCR representative in 2007, he has been active in the area of immigration, refugees, and displaced people in Japan in both private and public sectors. He has worked as a member of the Ministry of Justice, Immigration and Residency Management Advisory Committee. Taki is an interesting and unique individual as I get to know him better. He started to run marathon at age 66 and successfully completed Tokyo Marathon last month. He is still improving his time according to him, it's just amazing. I am equally delighted to have Dr. Peter Scarry, Professor of Political Science at the Boston College, to follow Taki as a commentator. I met Peter and his wife, Martha Bales, both of them are astute and the nuanced observers of American politics and culture at the Salzburg Global Seminar in Austria several years ago. His research interests include immigration in the United States, Sasakawa USA was delighted that Peter uh, took an opportunity with us to have a one week research trip in Japan this January, focusing on refugees and immigration policies in Japan. Taki was kind enough to meet Peter online before Peter went to Japan to help him prepare for research trip in Japan. Before we begin, I'd like to recognize two uh, uh, guests today. I'd like to thank Professor Michael Strauss of our TCU. He's an expert on foreign workers and immigrants in Japan. He was kind enough to share his knowledge with Peter and us before his trip to Japan. I would also like to acknowledge attendance of 
Japanese ambassador in Poland, Akio Miyajima from Poland. So thank you very much. Taki, floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning to all in the States and good evening to all in Japan. It's really an honor for me to uh, give a talk at this some um, prestigious um, um, forum to talk about Japan's changing refugee policy. In fact, um, today the, the Japanese government submitted um, a revised bill to the diet and the deliberation of the bill will start tomorrow. So um, the subject is quite um, timely. Now, let me share with you on my slides. I hope you can see uh, the presentation. This is the um, photo of the dia session this afternoon. Now, uh, let's start with uh, the global picture. I will quickly go over the global uh, situation surrounding refugees and IDPs um, to give a context to my um, presentation later. So the, um, the trend in the global, um, global trend in, in terms of displaced persons doesn't look good. When I joined the United Nations in 1981, there were only 10 million. That was big enough, but 10 million refugees. And today we have 104 million refugees and IDPs. So in, in 40 years time, the number of uh, displaced people um, are, have increased. 10 falls. So what are the problems? One, the first is uh, humanitarian problems. Um, so many million people are suffering um, in the refugee camps or urban slums. Some of them moved to uh, safer countries by a small boats or by on foot. And the second problem is uh, related to the first, the political problems um, we have seen, we are seeing uh, um, global pushbacks of uh, refugees and the states have been closing their doors to refugees in a variety of uh, ways, not only passport visa, travel ban, wars, or externalization of asylum processes, involuntary return from Kenya, Lebanon. Now recently, the UK Parliament is um, debating a, a proposed bill, illegal migration bill, where the illegal say, um, migrants or asylum seekers from France would be uh, not accepted by UK. They'll be deported without giving them an um, opportunity to apply for asylum in complete violation of the Ref Refugee Convention. But UK is not only one. I understand the US uh, has received um, 2.5 million or so the illegal um, migrants from uh, the southern countries, and many of them have been turned down. So we can see um, a number of uh, um, the Western countries have been closing uh, their borders and um, that not give them even a chance to apply for refugee status. Refugee problems have become high politics uh, rather than low politics in the, in the past. It's not only humanitarian issues, it's some um, political issues, it's uh, international political issues. What are the response of the uh, international society? It's a global refugee regime consisting of uh, refugee conventions and UNCR and member states. Member states um, are supposed to provide asylum and they are also supposed to burden share with the countries that receive millions of refugees in terms of resettlement or financial contributions. But as we have seen, the global refugee regime is not working. There are a number of limitations of a global refugee regime. The first one is the refugee regime wasn't premised on the idea on the, the millions of asylum seekers, refugees moving 
across the continent, across seas. The regime was um, designed for a smaller number of people, but now we have millions of people moving. And most important one is the 1951 Refugee Convention is based on the notion of persecution. But today, the refugees are um, um, fleeing their countries from threat to lives. They, have, they run, um, they flee because their uh, lives are threatened. So it's not, they are not um, fleeing um, persecution, but they are fleeing threat to lives. So um, the refugee conventions and other refugee um, um, treaties are not designed to cope with today's um, massive flow of uh, refugees. And another problem is no mechanism is um, prepared for the burden sharing of uh, refugee, uh, refugee accepting refugees among states. And some people, some states have been say um, evading responsibility expecting that other countries will provide support for refugees. There are attempts to fix this function this year. Um, one of them is the United Nations um, uh, Global Compact on Refugees, which was um, um, approved by the General Assembly in 2018 with four purposes, four aims. Um, the, there are this year full up meetings, and this year, at the end of this year, there will be a second global refugee forum in Geneva, and Japan was um, selected as one of the uh, vice chairs, uh, showing that um, the international committee expects Japan to play a role there. Now, overview of the Japan's refugee policy. In terms of asylum, um, the, for, during the last 40 years, in the 42 years, um, only uh, 1,117 people have been recognized as refugees, and 5,000 people have been given humanitarian status. The impact is very small, negligible. In terms of burden sharing, resettlement, and alternative pathways, th this is rather new. Uh, since 2010, only 55 families have been resettled. Now we have new scholarship scholarship programs. Uh, so far, about 200 uh, say, um, refugees have been accepted as international students. The financial assistance has been rather effective and rather big. In last year, government um, provided $200 million to the UNHCR, and private sector provided $150 million. Um, and these um, financial contributions help millions of uh, refugees and uh, IDPs. So I would say that uh, Japan's um, burden sharing in terms of financial assistance has been rather um, um, effective and uh, appreciated. Now, in terms of asylum in Japan, and this uh, shows a um, trend in asylum, uh, asylum applications and the recognition. The, the, this is the, the application which picks in 2017, around 20,000. Now it's about 4,000. In terms of uh, recognition, the number has been very small, almost invisible. Last year, um, the, the 200 people have been recognized as uh, convention refugees, and um, 1,760 were given humanitarian uh, status. The problem is, uh, there were almost um, um, 10,000 people who, are not, who have not applied for refugee status and who have been given special status, but not refugee status, not humanitarian status. Nobody knows how to deal with these uh, people, 10,000 people. And this is uh, uh, um, the problem the Ministry of Justice have to deal with, and we have to uh, divide ways. Um, to find a solution for them. 2022, um, Myanmar, um, as far as the is concerned, um, 9,000 people who are granted special specified activity status. It's not refugee status, it's not humanitarian status. Um, Afghanistan, uh, 147 people are granted refugee status. 
this was the biggest number um, for one country. And other people are having granted other um, statuses. Ukraine, um, the government took initiative to accept, almost invite um, Ukrainian um, refugees. And total number was 2,200. And um, about 2,000 were granted two fact complementary protection. Um, if the new bill is passed, they will be granted complementary protection. But at this time, again, these people are given specified activities uh, status. In all, 13,500 uh, people were granted uh, asylum in, 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 in various forms. And this compares to the 11,000 in the Chinese refugees accepted in 20 eight years. So well, we can say that the number um, is quite significant. Um, and then um, the, the question is uh, why uh, such a um, rather dramatic in, term, in terms in Japan, Japanese terms, why such a dramatic increase has taken place. I would use um, James Holyfield's um, four driver model to, to organize the presentation. There are four reasons. One is refugee, refugee issues have come closer to home. Um, many people realize that we have refugee problems and that raises some security concern. Another is some um, reform of the RSD, refugee status determination process, which started almost, almost 10 years ago um, to protect the rights of the refugees. Third one is a new immigration policy. Um, accept more foreign workers. And fourth one is uh, shifting public opinion. I'm not going into the details of this uh, model. But, um, now, security consideration. I would say uh, that acceptance of uh, more than 2,700 Ukrainians are primarily based on security considerations, um, national security considerations. Prime Minister um, um, Kishida decided to accept uh, or invite uh, Ukrainians to come to Japan to uh, relieve the Ukrainian government of, uh, of their duty to uh, help their own country people in such a way to counter Russian aggression. So it's highly politically motivated, but it, it of course had um, humanitarian motivations. Many people in Japan have um, uh, responded to the, uh, the, the plight of uh, the Ukrainians by offering many, many um, um, services and um, donations. Uh, there were 1,700 offers to help Ukrainians who came to Japan. Um, Afghanistan uh, is also um, a politically a very important place. Japan has over 30 years provided 70 billion um, M um, to, to stabilize the, the country, but, we, but that failed. And um, a number of people have fled to Japan asking for um, asylum. Myanmar is also an important country for Japan in terms of, uh, say, uh, business as well as uh, politics. Um, the 2021, Japan gave um, visa extension to 35,000 Myanmar in one go. This is a um, really big number. Many people don't know this, but uh, the, by a stroke of pen, 35,000 people were given visa extension indefinitely. Now, um, second one is a reform of the asylum system. This is quite important. I, and I have been in, in, involved in this process. The, the first uh, one was a creation of the complementary protection um, system. Uh, complementary protection is um, to help uh, to rescue people who are not recognized as refugees um, under the refugee convention because they don't fall within the five grounds of refugee um, race, region, nationality, uh, specified um, group, and uh, political opinion. So the, uh, this complementary protection system was designed to help those people. And Japan uh, was um, uh, trying to in, um, uh, introduce this system. 
This um, um, complementary protection system is included in the revised bill. This is the first. The second is um, um, the, the first um, RSC refugee state of determination guidelines, um, which was published only last, um, last month. Uh, um, in my view, this is very important um, um, work because it um, uh, expanded the definition of uh, persecution. And, um, and now people who want to apply for asylum in Japan know what, what uh, are important, what are not important um, for their, their application to be admitted. So there are more transparency, there are more say um, accountability. And I expect that there will be more um, asylum seekers, genuine asylum seekers who want to come to Japan. And this is the first in, in Asia. And I hope that um, uh, other countries like Korea will follow suit and they um, create their own RSA guidelines and publish them. Third one is um, um, the abuse to hold and to re re reduce the abusive applications. Um, and this has, uh, in a sense, succeeded. Um, the application has uh, re been reduced from seven, almost 20,000 to 4,000. And, um, but one, one consequence was uh, the increase in the, the uh, people who refused to be deported. Um, and this uh, is, um, um, as far as uh, immigration service agencies concerned, a serious issue, and they have been trying to um, um, solve this problem by revising the immigration, immigration laws and um, provision, so-called suspension of uh, deportation clause. That prohibits the deportation of uh, people, even if they have criminal records, as long as they keep applying for refugee status. Uh, um, so if, even if um, um, a foreigner who has committed um, um, crimes such as murder, um, they, he can't be deported if he's an asylum seeker. Uh, it might be this is um, 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 deficiency in the law, and the government is trying to fix this by um, introducing an exception to the um, suspension of a deportation clause. But lawyers and the refugee support groups have been um, against this um, change. And this uh, is, is uh, one, one of the most controversial issue uh, in the revision of the law. Now, this is also important, shifting public opinion. Uh, I have been, um, together with some colleagues, I have been doing an um, opinion survey on refugees through internet, um, through internet, and uh, we can see that um, more people say Japan should accept more refugees, and uh, fewer people say that refugee is, is not their own problem, and the fewer people are afraid of accepting refugees. Um, in the past, um, um, majority said we shouldn't accept uh, any more refugees, or um, Refugee is, is not our problem, it's uh, somebody else's problem. And also people say that um, we don't want to receive refugees because uh, they are dangerous people. Apparently the public community is shifting and this, is, this supports uh, the government uh, rather um, aggressive refugee policy. Um, so it's a uh, welcome changes. New foreign workers policy, in, this shows the number of working age population. The, now there's a national consensus that Japan can't survive without the help of the foreigners. And um, um, in 2018, Prime Minister Abe decided to officially open the, the door um, to, to foreign workers. And um, the other changes are taking place. Now, accelerating acceptance of foreign workers um, definitely drive uh, refugee accept acceptance because it's not um, logical to say that we welcome foreign workers but not uh, uh, refugees. So I think this um, um, accelerated acceptance of foreign workers is an important driver for accepting more refugees. 
in terms of burden sharing resettlement, this is a small scale uh, um, resettlement. It was started in 2010. Um, when I was um, uh, UNC rep in 2007, I um, worked with the government to start um, uh, this resettlement. And uh, to my surprise, it was uh, decided very quickly and the government started a small scale resettlement program in 2010. It's uh, still small, but um, I think this will grow and it may become one of the uh, refugee policy pillars in, in Japan in the coming years. On the alternative pathways, um, the, the UNCR Japan, uh, where I was uh, the, the chairman, has um, collaborated, collaborated with some 30 universities, and more and more people are accepted by the, the universities as international students. And a few NGOs have also started uh, their own program um, accepting Syrians or um, Ukrainians. I hope this uh, uh, is important. I, I hope this will look in, um, expand in the coming months and years. Now, uh, the burden sharing in terms of financial contributions, this is uh, what I believe uh, least appreciated, but most effective in, um, in helping millions of um, refugees around the world. Um, Japan has been um, one of the top four or five uh, financial contributors to the UNHCR. Um, every year, 100 million to 200 million dollars were um, um, provided. In terms of Ukraine, um, last year, the US um, 600 million humanitarian aid was uh, provided. And on top of that, Prime Minister Kishida uh, announced that $7.5 billion economic support uh, will be given to the um, Ukrainian, and this is important. Private donations for refugees has also, uh, have been also been increasing. In 2022, 2022, Japan for UNCL collected the US dollar 180 million for UNCL. I think there are four, 400,000 donors it's a quite big amount. And the other NGOs like uh, MSF, World Vision, have also collected a large amount of money. So private donations for refugees have uh, been increasing. Um, is Japanese financial assistance help those who help refugees uh, and who benefit, uh, that benefit millions of refugees and IDPs, uh, not hundreds or thousands? So it's, it's quite important. But it's not known. Um, my, my survey, which I, which I showed um, a few minutes uh, ago, asked, do you know that Japan has been providing this amount of money? Only less than 10% of the respondents said, I know. So majority of the people don't know the impact or, or magnitude and impact of Japan's financial contributions to refugee programs abroad. I think that Japan has a comparative advantage in, in, in financial support. Uh, and many people say that Japan's policies and checkbook, checkbook diplomacy, I give you money so you take care of uh, refugees. But um, uh, from my experience as the UN shared controller, having money is crucial. You can't do anything unless you have money. So money is very important. And Japan has been providing a um, large amount of money. Uh, to help refugees. So it's very important. And um, it makes sense from a comparative advantage and theory. Japan is not comparatively strong in terms of accepting refugees. If the refugees um, themselves don't want to come to Japan. And um, so the, the in terms of impact on the global refugee um, system, Japan's comparative advantage lies in the financial um, assistance. And I want to stress this point. So last year, um, no, this is 2021, um, Japan was number four in terms of um, um, donation to the UNHCR. Uh, and as I said, Japan is um, giving $7.5 billion to Ukrainian um, government. 
2022 will show the similar pattern. I think Japan is among the four, three or third or fourth largest donors to the UNHCR. So Japan is changing. Um, in fact, Japan has been described as a refugee isolated country that has been reluctant to accept the refugees. I think this is an economist, um, which was 2015. And if your refugees don't even bother with Japan, I have seen many, say, foreign um, newspapers which um, um, criticize Japan for, um, for receiving too few uh, refugees. And there has been, there was um, Japan bashing by foreign media as well as um, domestic media, but it has been and uh, changing um, recently, Japan refugee policy is changing first. Um, asylum in, is improving, while burden sharing has been constant. Japan has been a um, very loyal um, donor to uh, to the UNHCR, and uh, the experience these changes were caused by four forces: and security considerations, the uh, uh, protection of human rights, the demand for of the market, and the national culture or public opinion. And so one can say that Japan stands at crossroads. Um, and that's important because many of the Western countries have been closing their doors to refugees. Um, and Japan is um, increasing um, the, the acceptance and also financial contributions. Um, that's why and there are some expectations that Japan can take some lead. Um, Julian Trix, who came to Japan last December, she's an UNHCR assistant high commissioner for protection. She said major changes and new movements in foreign, foreign refugee policy are taking place in Japan. She was very critical um, one year ago. Um, she was very critical of Japan's refugee policy, but somehow in December, by December, she has uh, re realized that Japan has um, taken a number of steps. So her um, assessment of Japan has changed. Another important um, the, um, assessment is by Alexander Bates, who is a um, um, well-known refugee scholar. Japan is an exciting, exciting and pivotal moment in shaping its national refugee policies. It's um, opening up access to asylum while containing support, humanitarian and development aid abroad at a time in which the global refugee system is under threat and in need of reform. Japan can play an important leadership role. This was um, um, this was um, a part of the preface to the book, which we are um, translating. She had written a Refuge in 2017, and we have uh, translated the, the book into Japanese, and it will come out in June this year. And he sent me an um, 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 introduction to the Japanese readers and one of them is in this part. So the, these people have um, revised the assessment of Japan's um, contribution to the global refugee regime. Um, and that's um, um, happening for us. So what I think um, Japan should um, pursue is a disciplined humanitarianism, disciplined humanitarianism. And we need both warm heart and cool head. Um, for example, the, the Merkel, like Mr. Merkel was up, applauded, applauded when she said, we shall open doors to all Syrian refugees. And you know what happened afterwards? There was a chaos, there was um, um, disorder. And then many people um, um, started to um, uh, disagree with her um, um, policy and not only German, but many European countries have shut their daughters to refugees. So there will be, um, there, there was some um, unintended consequences. So warm heart is not enough. We have to have a cool heart, cool head uh, to foresee what could happen and what, to see what is the best um, amidst the a number of constraints. So what is important balancing security, rights, market, and culture? to find um, a kind of compromise. Japan might have been doing uh, quite good in terms of this balancing. There's no um, 
no say right um, right wing parties saying that we should not accept refugees. There's no confusion um, because of the presence of a large number of refugees or foreign people. Japan has been um, everything has been under control, and this is uh, something which um, other country could uh, um, look into. In that way, Japan can and should be a leader in, in refugee policy, at least in Asia and hopefully in, around the, in the globe. So I think some um, time has um, just, uh, I have spent 30 minutes, so I will stop here and um, I'll stop sharing the picture. Well, thank you very much. Uh, um, as I said, now, uh, um... You can go over 30 minutes if you want, but uh, we have more time for a discussion and a commentary from uh, Peter. So uh, thank you very much for a, a comprehensive uh, presentation. You uh, cast a light on uh, all the major issues uh, with regard to uh, refugees and uh, immigration in Japan. I was uh, particularly uh, encouraged that uh, um, you talked about the uh, major uh, changes with regard to uh, uh, refugees and immigration in Japan, uh, as well as a uh, uh, perception of uh, 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 international community uh, immigration uh, refugee experts uh, uh, on Japan. So uh, uh, we got a lot to uh, uh, discuss. So thank you very much. I would like to uh, invite Peter to uh, 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 make some uh, comment. I uh, um, met uh, Peter uh, in Salzburg, Austria several years ago, and uh, uh, we immediately uh, hit it off, and uh, 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 you've been uh, very kind in uh, helping me deepen my understanding of American politics. And as I said, uh, uh, I was delighted that uh, you took uh, an opportunity with Sasakawa USA to uh, uh, come to Japan and uh, do research on, uh, uh, on Japanese immigration, I mean, the refugee uh, policy. Without, uh, 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 much previous uh, uh, knowledge or prejudice with regard to uh, uh, Japanese policy. So I'm looking forward to your uh, comments. So Peter, thank you. Now, okay, thank you, Satihiro. Um, it's, uh, I appreciate the opportunity you've given me to uh, learn about uh, Japan, Japanese politics and society. And I certainly um, am honored and it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to respond to uh, Dr. Takizawa, or Taki, as he uh, prefers to be referred to, um, whom I've had the pleasure of meeting in Japan and look forward to seeing again in the United States. Um, um, I also want to thank um, uh, Professor Michael Strauss, whom you mentioned, who's out there, who was very kind and, and helpful to me as I was preparing for my trip. And finally, uh, to Naritada Miura, who was my guide, my interpreter, and my traveling companion in Japan in January, without whom it would really not have been possible uh, to get around and, and, and to meet as many people as I did. So thanks to all of you. So as um, Taki has, has said, um, that the refugee uh, problem is now part of high politics not just in Japan, but around the world. Um, and part of that is the populist nationalist response uh, to uh, refugee and immigration issues um, and, the, um, and, the, and, the, uh, and the perceived uh, uh, diminishment in political will to provide asylum in many countries around the world. Um, so, I see Japanese political and economic elites um, are responding uh, to the perceived needs for uh, for both workers um, and population increases uh, to deal with their population decline, um, and as well as to international press pressures and uh, concerns about their reputation globally when it comes to refugee and immigration issues. And I say that with all respect. Um, but I think therein lies the challenge and the problem. Um, migration, uh, again, emphasizing that that includes both immigrant workers as well as refugees, um, is undoubtedly the issue of our era, era, the issue that has exposed 
and exacerbated tensions and divisions in the world's affluent advanced democracies. Um, now obviously, I'm saying this with particular reference to my own country, the United States, which I'm not holding up as a paragon here at all. Uh, but it's certainly not limited to us. Western Europe is dealing with these problems, and now Japan is confronting them. So from my perspective, from, again, an American's perspective, uh, Western elites have not met this challenge well. They've proved themselves alternatively deaf, oblivious, and even dismissive and disdainful of the concerns both real and imagined, and they're both, they're both operative of their fellow citizens when it comes to these issues. Um, what I would put at the top of the list of this kind of, 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 the, of the turmoil, the political turmoil and confusion we are in the midst of, certainly in the United States, but elsewhere right now, is the fundamental confusion that I see between immigrants, those who move freely across international borders, and refugees who, who don't. Um, this distinction requires careful scrutiny, which it's not always getting these days. Um, at the same time, of course, as Taki has emphasized, the populations at risk who are on the move globally are increasing. Um, but at the same time, um, and this is something I learned uh, in the 1990s when I was in Washington at the Brookings Institution, and I got to know a prominent refugee advocate, Shepi Abramowitz, who was the wife of a distinguished American diplomat, Morton Abramowitz, but Shepi was a, a force unto herself in refugee affairs, affairs. She reminded me or brought to my attention what she saw as a, as a real problem, that she saw refugee and immigration advocates coming together and joining forces for understandable reasons. Um, immigrant advocates needed refugees because refugee advocates do have some high moral standing, uh, um, um, especially among elites in their countries, whereas immigrant advocates uh, don't have that standing, uh, not in the same way. Uh, but of course, they do have various domestic uh, allies pushing for their uh, for their for, for their cause, whether those be businesses or fellow um, uh, uh, fellow former immigrants from the countries in question. Um, but she saw this coming together as a potential problem um, because it began to blur the distinctions between immigrants and refugees. Um, and that those distinctions get blurred, for understandable political alliance reasons on both sides having some interest in blurring that distinction. But she also expressed concern that that um, was going to undermine and weaken the claims of refugees if they became identified or uh, uh, equated to, 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 to ordinary migrants. Um, I think of this often in the United States in the contemporary debate um, as our pol political elites, our commentators, uh, elite journalists especially, routinely and uncritically refer to the tens of thousands of individuals who are streaming up to our southern border from all parts of the world, um, and, and refer to them uncritically um, as refugees. Um, when, for example, we know that many of these perhaps especially those from Central America, but not exclusively, are women who are fleeing domestic violence, uh, fleeing their spouses who have, have abused them, or any number of other reasons that do not fit refugee criteria. But at this point in the United States, at least, and I think this is true in Western Europe as well, I'm not speaking for Japan, um, this distinction has virtually been lost track of. Um, and seldom is it asked, are, are the tens of thousands of people coming to our border actually refugees? Certainly there's adjudications to be determined to, to determine their actual status. But in the broader public debate, our elites in particular, I would argue, have fundamentally blurred this distinction and the presumption that these tens of thousands of people who are not always being 
treated fairly at the border. I would acknowledge that. Um, are nevertheless not de facto refugees or should not presumed to be refugees. Um, another such dynamic uh, in terms of manipulating terms and definitions um, in, in the US is, um, is a much more benign development, I think, but nevertheless part of this confusion. Um, and, it, 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 and I'm referring to the designations such as temporary protective status and similar designations that are providing alternative pathways to populations such as Venezuelans, um, most notably right now, who are undoubtedly uh, in, in, in general deserve some sort of um, uh, uh, acceptance or under duress. Um, but as Taki has mentioned, uh, the refugee situation in the United States uh, even three years after Donald Trump, uh, we have not really reopened our programs, but we have opened these various kinds of temporary protective status designations as an alternative. Um, and that, of course, brings me to Japan. Yes, I haven't forgotten about Japan. Um, 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 it seems to me that um, a similar dynamic is going on in Japan, whereby uh, de facto refugees or presumptive refugees um, are not being admitted as refugees as, su as such, but under various uh, alternative designations such as complementary protection. Um, I understand why this is happening. I'm not criticizing it, um, but I, I, I do think it's worth uh, pointing out given the experience uh, in, in the West, in the, especially in the United States. Um, um, and again, my concern about Japan, and again, I say this with all due respect and, and, and mindful of my developing but still limited understanding of Japanese politics and society, uh, that there is a danger in Japan of, of, the, of their elites, much as our elites have, I, I, I would say, um, um, by elite high-mindedness. Uh, that um, is, at the, is at the expense of too ready dismissal of the misgivings and anxieties of their own fellow citizens about what's, 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 what's uh, transpiring with regard to these population changes globally and obviously within Japan itself. Um, um, I'm, uh, I see in the kinds of categories that Taki has been uh, adumbrating for us in terms of um, uh, complementary protection and so forth, a similar dynamic of, 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 of political evasiveness. Again, I understand why this is happening, but, but I also see that down this road lies uh, political challenges that I'm not sure I'm hearing being addressed right now. I know that Taki um, is doing survey surveys and is providing some survey data. I would very much like to see more of, of that evidence, what those questions look like, because if there's one thing I'm pretty clear on is that in the, in the United States for several decades, my colleagues both at the Brookings Institution as well as at the American Enterprise Institute were capable of summoning all sorts of survey data arguing that there was basically no challenges ahead with regard to immigration policy. Um, my sense, my reading of the, of the evidence was somewhat contrary, and I have to confess, I feel rather vindicated. If there's one issue that put somebody like Donald Trump in the White House, it was immigration. And the disaffection of masses of ordinary Americans from our political elites is something that's hard to ignore when I visit a, an, another country begin to learn about it and see it beginning to struggle with some of the same issues that we have struggled with and continue to struggle with in the United States. Um, um, I think I'll leave it, leave it there, okay? Great, thank you very much, Peter. Um, Taki, do you have uh, any response to uh, uh, any part of uh, um, Peter's comment? Um, I I think um, what um, Peter said is um, um, very sharp and profound, and I need to reflect on 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 his um, on Peter's um, observations. Um, 
one thing um I am thinking is this um um Japan has been shielded from having say um problems um, um surrounding uh, migration and the refugees because um doors has been shut and um now Japan is obliged to open its doors to both migrant workers and refugees. What Japan will not do is um, 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 rapid opening of the gates. The government will do it very cautiously, step by step. And this reflects Japanese political culture. This reflects Japanese um, decision-making system. It, they will do it very cautiously. Um, open a little bit and then see the impact and then again open it wider. In this way, they will ensure that the, the incoming refugees and um, migra migrant workers will be uh, following a disciplined approach. Discipline is a key word um, and um, setting rules and procedures and complying with them is a key word. All Japanese are following rules. Whether rules are good or bad is another issue, but they do follow the rules and disciplines. And this is what the Japanese government and Japanese public expect foreign people to follow. We are following all detailed rules. And so please follow them. Then we welcome you. Where, wherever you come from, whatever your um, religious background is. My observation that, um, the, at the root of Japanese concern is uh, the, are they following our way of life? Mm. Are they following our <clears throat> rules and uh, policies and uh, laws? So if um, the Japanese um, sure that um, these people will follow our way of life, including laws and um, the, the rules, they'll be welcoming. And I see, um, by the way, this um, survey, I will share the data with the Peter and others. I, I have shown only two, a few slides. I haven't seen any say, religious um, um, bias. And I, I haven't seen any religion, I tell you, um, the, the uh, bias is based on color. And this is important. Um, um, in fact, this is my feeling. For example, the uh, Muslim people who uh, um, live in Japan, I think uh, 120 or 130,000 people, there's no anti-Muslim movement. Of course, one can say that uh, the number is so small that uh, any problem can't be seen. But I think um, people don't um, discriminate the Muslims. Um, uh, there's no little prejudice against um, um, the the uh, black people or Asians, um, although there are say, many people adore white people, this is true. But in general, the, the Japanese biases are not so obvious. But what is clear is they like discipline, disciplined approach. And that's why I said uh, Japan should follow disciplined humanitarianism, which would avoid the confusion and the chaos. Um, and in that sense, I think Japan can show to the world that there is a one way. Um, our approach is a disciplined humanitarianism. We will accept uh, refugees and others as long as um, people follow the, uh, the established rules and the uh, agreement. So this is my, my I say, initial reaction to what Peter said. But I do appreciate uh, uh, Peter's point. And I'm I'm thinking I'm still thinking that um, I'd invite uh, Peter at least on online to talk to the Japanese um, audience. I think uh, they will be very happy to listen to your uh, analysis of the American politics on immigration and the refugees. Okay. Thank you very much. I have uh, uh, several questions, but uh, uh, if I may, I invite Peter. Uh, to talk about you now your uh, uh, first timer to Japan uh, viewpoint of uh, this rules and uh, uh, disciplines that the Taki, the words that the Taki used. That, uh, uh, do you see those things as an uh, uh, impediment uh, for uh, uh, foreigners uh, uh, to be part of uh, uh, Japanese society? 
What was your observation? Yes, well, from my observations, which are necessarily limited, uh, but I'm trying to learn fast, um, I, 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 I think I very much agree with what Taki um, has said. Um, my sense is that what, um, um, what, what America can learn from Japan, um, which will surprise, I think, many of my American colleagues, is that um, I don't, I don't think that Japan is, is, is has succumbed to multiculturalism. Um, and um, while I um, am not hostile to multiculturalism in the United States, um, it comes under various guises and in various forms. Uh, we are inevitably and have long been a multicultural nation dealing with all sorts of pluralism and variety that Japan just has not. Um, we've struggled with it, um, and we're struggling with it once again in the United States. But it seems to me it leads to a muddle. Um, I once had an immigrant leader who was involved in a controversy that, that I was studying in suburban Chicago um, say to me in, in sort of desperation, sort of mock desperation. He was a very smart supporter of uh, uh, AMLO's party in Mexico. Uh, so he was very left and aggressive. But he said to me, I wish the hell you people would tell us how we're supposed to act here in America, because we don't know exactly how we're supposed to act. And I think that's, that's, there's much truth in that, that in the United States, um, we are, on one hand, anything seems to go. On the other hand, nothing seems to go. We, 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 we don't have, I think, under, well understood criteria ourselves in the United States right now as to how we're to govern ourselves or, or conduct ourselves, much less do we take much attention or time to, uh, to, to teach immigrants about that. Even to say teach immigrants is seen by many Americans as condescending. Um, so we, we have some real problems about that, even on the most mundane level, and I'll stop in a, in a second, uh, the most mundane level, teaching English in the United States, uh, our efforts at that are, have been diminishing as the numbers of immigrants have been increasing. We don't do a good job of it. The amount of money we put into it is, is less and less, um, partly because we think it's not so important for immigrants to learn English, and partly because we're not sure you know, we, we don't pay attention to it. Um, I think that's not going to happen in Japan. And if there's one thing I think we could learn is that Japan has a very strong sense, maybe from an American view, too strong a sense of what it's about and what immigrants have to adapt to. But regardless, I think there's something to be learned there from us. And I think in that sense, I agree with Taki very much. It's a, a difficult core question because uh, it's really uh, uh, what it means to be Japanese, what it means to be a, an American. So it's a, a fundamental, fundamental question. And also in terms of language, learning uh, Japanese seems to be a little more difficult than learning English for many foreigners. So uh, uh, there are a lot to uh, do, uh, uh, both in the United States and Japan. I'd like to invite uh, uh, Ms. Mireya Solis, uh, a friend of mine, and uh, uh, Japanese uh, experts. Uh, uh, he does a lot of work in the trade, uh, uh, economic security. I respect her work. And also uh, both of us living in a, a foreign country or at least a country that we are not uh, uh, born in. So uh, uh, I'd like to invite uh, uh, Mireya for her uh, comments or questions. Thank you very much, uh, Akimoto-san. Uh, thank you for putting together this very interesting program. I have learned a lot from uh, Dr. Takizawa and Dr. Skerry. I have um, just a few questions, if I may. I think that the changes in Japan's refugee policy are uh, really promising. And I was wondering, and I think this ties in with a discussion that the two panels were just having, but I was wondering with these new uh, status, the complementary protection system, if uh, Dr. Takizawa could also talk about the integration supports. And uh, now that Japan is bringing in more uh, refugees or other people through these other status, uh, that presents challenges in terms of uh, language acquisition, work, education, uh, community uh, integration. So what is the thinking uh, and the action there? A second question, and this is not just related to um, the refugee question, but as you mentioned in Japan, immigration policy is changing and 
A report on the trainee system was just uh, released uh, that suggesting major changes. And one looming question, I think, on immigration policy in Japan has been the path to citizenship or lack thereof. So I was wondering if you could also talk about if there is uh, changes uh, on the horizon there to make that path more accessible uh, to more. And finally, this is just a small observation, but I was really struck by the numbers uh, uh, that Isawa you put on the 2022 um, uh, situation of arrivals. And in particular that, uh, I think that the world has been fixated on Japan's Ukraine policy, rightly so. And of course, arrival of people from Ukraine, a very notable development, but compared to the number of people from Myanmar, actually it's a small number, but it doesn't seem to be picked up by the media as much. And sometimes people talk about Japan's changing uh, policies driven more by the Ukraine crisis, but it seems that are also driven by the situation closer to Japan in the region. So I was wondering if you have any thoughts about that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Taki. Yes, um, the integration policies and supports are very important. And um, um, the when the government introduced the new um, um, program to invite foreign workers in 2018, the government um, upgraded the Immigration Bureau to Immigration Services, Services Agency and created two divisions. One is for the immigration control. Another is for the um, uh, support um, of um, foreigners and Japanese coexistence. So this is the, the new division. Um, and the immigration service agencies has uh, a trouble because they have no experience. So um, the government collected a number of um, officials from other ministries and set up this division. Um, but it, the, the government is aware of the critical importance of um, support um, of uh, those people, refugees and migrants who will be here for many years. Uh, they know the, the importance. And um, the, there is um, um, the, uh, not law, but administrative uh, uh, guidance is to support the municipalities to um, set up a system to support the uh, foreigners um, schooling, medical care, and um, all sorts of uh, things. And a number of NGOs uh, have been also active in this area. So now there is a recognition that we do need to have a new system um, to live with foreigners, but the experiences are limited, um, at least as far as uh, the immigration service agencies are concerned. So uh, I think um, um, Japan is um, at the stage of learning how the what is the best way to accommodate the uh, incoming migrants and the refugees. Uh, um, so it will take, it will, um, take years. What is important that now the government or public has, um, has made aware that it's not only an entry problem, it's the, what is more important is to, to how to uh, live together with a large number of people. So this realization is um, a first step um, to be, to be um, appreciated. Second one, citizenship, uh, um, naturalization, uh, it's, it's um, interesting, it's rather easier. Some people say it's easier to get a citizenship or natural, naturalization than getting a permanent visa. Um, because um, the naturalization has been in, uh, um, handled by the Ministry of Justice um, um, Civil, Civil Affairs Bureau, where the um, refugee issues uh, have, and um, the permanent, permanent residency has been, um, say, administered by the immigration service agencies, and two departments didn't talk too, too much. So uh, the, some, uh, some uh, people say it's much easier to get naturalization. And indeed, every year, 10,000 people get um, citizenship. Um, so this will be uh, eventually um, um, reconciled. And um, 
before before naturalization, people need to get the permanent residency, and the government has been trying to relax the conditions for uh, giving permanent residency. Last year, the government um, decided to give um, permanent residency at the first stage only one year. After one year um, of uh, working and living in Japan, one could get um, permanent um, status. Uh, of course, uh, there are a number of uh, conditions like um, education and income and uh, the type of work. But um, to me, it's uh, surprising that after one year, people get, get a permanent residency. You know, so um, there are changes, and the changes are coming very first. So eventually, um, the issue of uh, citizenship um, will be um, discussed again. But uh, my, my sense is that uh, both um, permanent residency and um, citizenship nationality um, uh, will be uh, um, accelerated um, in the coming years. The third, third question, I wasn't clear. Um, it wasn't clear to me what was the question. Sorry, I was muted. Um, uh, just that I found interesting that the 22 numbers that you mentioned, the number of people from Myanmar is much larger than the people arriving from Ukraine. And nevertheless, a lot of the public discussion seems to be that these changes are driven by Japan's response to Ukraine. Yes, um, I didn't explain clearly. Uh, the most of um, the 9,500 or so um, Myanmar nationals who are given a special status had been in Japan um, when the coup d'etat um, took place in 2021. There were 35,000 Myanmar nationals um, in Japan at that time. And uh, what government did was first to give them um, visa extension um, to all who want, who wish to have a visa extension. And then um, government, uh, in fact, um, um, asked the people uh, what they want to do. You see, many people uh, are have been working as some, um, say, um, 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 trainees or um, technical trainees or students, and they didn't have any, say, um, um, say um, um, any reason to be a refugee. They, they didn't expect that um, the government um, uh, was uh, taken over by the military. So in a sense, they were uh, refugees surprise, surprise, but they didn't have um, any political opinion. They didn't have any, say, uh, religious or um, 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 nationality issues, except um, uh, Rohingya, Rohingya people. So the, the explanation that um, um, they had been in Japan when um, the Buddha the, um, took place. That's why uh, the, the large number of nationals were given a special status. Eventually, um, if the complementary protection system is introduced, some of uh, these uh, 10,000 Myanmar nationals would be given, um, uh, could be given, say, a uh, complementary protection status. But the, to be eligible for the complementary protection, there must be an element of a persecution. Um, so this is uh, one of the criteria. People have to feel that they are, they would be persecuted on account on some account. Uh, if they don't feel the the they would be persecuted for whatever reasons, they would be um, not given uh, complementary protection. So Thank this is very complicated, much. but it's it's not. The, there is no clear cut uh, solution. I think the uh, government is uh, struggling to um, um, find out um, the logical, uh, clear cut, uh, say, um, uh, system for those people who are now in Japan. Um, uh, the total is about 13,000. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'd like to uh, take up a question from uh, uh, Mr. Baden Firth of uh, Mitsubishi. Uh, considering the impact of economic downturn and pending climate crisis, it is very likely we will see an unprecedented wave of economic and climate refugees 
from poorer countries, particularly from Africa to Europe, South Central America to North America, as well as within Asia. What discussion and considerations are underway to proactively deal with this nightmarish scenario? I think this can be a question to uh, both of you. Hmm. There will be a, 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 you know, a lot of uh, uh, refugees uh, uh, increasing uh, uh, number in the near future because of economic downturn and the pending climate crisis. Uh, are, have there been a, a, a lot of a proactive uh, uh, discussions as to how to deal with this? Um, if I may um, give my um, um, remarks, there is that's been little discussion on the so-called climate um, refugees. Um, even the UN UN chair started talking about it some several years ago. Now. Um, in Japan, this is not the topic yet. Um, and um, in terms of, say, economic, economic refugees uh, um, from poor countries, the government assessment, IES's assessment of most of the asylum seekers in Japan are economic migrants. Indeed, that I think that has been the case. Um, for example, in 1917, almost 20,000 people uh, applied for refugee status. Um, but um, it was obvious, I have seen some of these um, uh, applications, but it's obvious that they want to come to Japan for work. And uh, there, there was a strong demand for such workers. A small and medium enterprises uh, wanted to have anyone. So asylum seekers and foreigners um, didn't matter. They were welcome. But um, that has been, in a sense, regulated, controlled by um, the having a stronger regulation, a stronger control, such as such as not giving um, automatically the working work permit to any asylum seekers. But um, in the coming years, um, we we don't know whether there will be massive number of uh, say poor people coming to Japan. As, um, as uh, the, uh, the, this person asked and mentioned, Japan is becoming poorer huh? and, the, and the income is uh, uh, probably lower than most of the Asian countries in, in 10 years time. There is a little reason why they should come to Japan, not to Hong Kong, not to China, or not to Malaysia. I think there's a pessimism in Japan that um, Japan is aging and uh, becoming smaller and not, Many people would come to Japan. Um, so the, the what the government is uh, talking about is to provide incentives to to invite foreign workers to come. Um, so it's not only um, excluding or controlling the entry, but inviting them. Otherwise, um, the unskilled workers, even one skilled workers, may not come to Japan in the coming years. So um, this um, um, economic Economic refugees have been a problem, uh, but uh, I don't think that it will become a, a big issue in the coming years. For Japan. Yeah. yeah. Hi. I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, Justice Minister Saito, uh, in the recent uh, uh, statement at the Diet, uh, 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 quoting, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, testimony by uh, some government officials several years ago that uh, uh, even, even though they like to uh, find uh, uh, asylum seekers or refugees, uh, uh, they have a hard time uh, uh, finding qualified uh, 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 asylum seekers or refugees. And the reason a little different from what we've been discussing, but uh, I just wanted to uh, mention that. Peter, uh, would you like to uh, uh, make your comment? Well, sure. Um, I would just say that um, I think um, the kinds of climate concerns, climate refugee concerns that the question asks about um, um, do get attention among uh, various NGOs and, and elites. Um, but I, I would I, I would express my 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 concern that the, the dynamic I explained and talked about in my remarks plays out there that the um, elites focus uh, on the distant future as we need elites to do um, um, and 
managed to uh, set the terms of, of, of policy debate, if not exactly policy, but the gap between them and large sectors of the American public is huge, or I think it's huge in, in other Western democracies too. And while they may manage to get their, their items on the agenda and even impact policy, I don't believe that the rest of the populace is anywhere near close to where they are. And so the gap continues to widen, I, I fear. Got it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we are uh, uh, past uh, our time, but uh, uh, if I may, uh, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, give a uh, uh, um, final opportunity, last opportunity for uh, Taki and Peter to uh, uh, make any comments to conclude. Well, it was really um, um, exciting to, to join this forum. And um, I think um, a number of very important issues have come out. And then the comparison between Japan and the, the USA and Japan and Europe uh, is also interesting um, issue. And I do plan to hold another say online session, uh, inviting um, uh, Peter. Uh, to give um, his uh, very interesting, unique, and um, incisive uh, views to the Japanese um, uh, audience. I think that will be uh, welcomed and that will stimulate um, our thinking and discussion in the coming uh, years. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. Well, um, I, I look forward to that uh, opportunity and appreciate the chance to do that and uh, appreciate the uh, uh, gracious, shall I say, tutelage of the many Japanese I've uh, been able to meet in the last uh, few months, especially Taki and especially Satihiro, and I can't forget Nari. Um, I'm eager to continue learning more about Japan and um, uh, look forward to those discussions. So thank you. Thank you very much. With that, uh, I'd like to thank all the audience uh, who uh, are tuned in this morning or this uh, evening in Tokyo. So thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.